This video series is going to be about learning Next.js, following the documentation through from beginning to end. So we can build a project following their recommended official best practices. So why did I decide to create this video series on Next.js? Well, I've been using Next.js for a while, all the way back when there was a page router, and now we've got the app router, which is super awesome, but there's still lots to learn because there's so many differences. Actually, Next.js got me into using React, because I was using Angular before because I prefer the framework. And remember, Angular is a framework, React is a library, but Next.js turns React into a framework, which just has so much goodness, which we're gonna get into. But when I've been building projects with Next.js, I have been jumping around the documentation and just reading the bare minimum, what I needed to know to get things done. But I don't think I've been building it very efficiently and effectively. Right, we've got static pages, we've got dynamic pages, and we can turn static pages into dynamic pages without even realizing it. And that's not very efficient because most of the time, a lot of pages don't need to be dynamic, but putting some function in there or something which could probably be moved to another component up or down the tree could make it a lot more efficient. In this series, we're not just gonna be following through the documentation, we are actually gonna be building a project. What project are we gonna be building? Well, I think we're gonna start the project on the next video. So this time we have got time for you to leave your comments below and make some suggestions on what projects we can build. Later on in this video, I will share some of my ideas of what we could build. I'd love to hear your thoughts on your ideas and your thoughts on the ideas that I have. So as you can see behind me, I have got a terminal. We are gonna need that. And I've gone straight to the docs uh, page and we're gonna start right at the beginning. So let's read through some of the documentation, not all of it together. So what is Next.js? And I think we all have some sort of idea. It's a framework, but what really is it? Well, the way the official documentation describes it is Next.js is a React framework for building full stack web applications. You use React components to build user interfaces and Next.js for additional features and optimizations, which I will do want to add is super, super awesome. The features that we're gonna see now that the framework gives us is absolutely great and I really, really love it. Under the hood, Next.js also abstracts and automatically configures tooling needed for React. Again, double thumbs up, absolutely love that. For example, like bundling, compiling, and more. This allows you to focus on building your application instead of spending time with configuration. And having used Next.js multiple times, many times in fact, I definitely agree with that. And yes, you can tweak it and so forth, but I love out of the box, it just works. So let's have a look at some of the main features that they mention. I've got a few in my head already, but maybe I've missed some that I just take for granted. So let's just go through it. So the main features include routing, a file system based router built on top of server components that supports layouts, nested routing, loading states, error handling, and more. And this is great. I really love the file system routing because it's really easy to just get pages displaying and working. That could be APIs or UI pages. And I love the way the new layouts work, but to be honest, I don't think I understand it completely properly. So when we go through this video series, we're gonna to learn together on how to do that and we're gonna build it into our project. Rendering client side and server side rendering with client and server side components. It's something that's talked about a lot now because it does blur the lines between front and back end a lot. You know, imagine having SQL queries or API requests in your UI component, but it's safe, don't worry, because it's rendered on the server. In the rendering section, they also talk about further optimization with static and dynamic rendering with Next.js and streaming on the edge, which I think is awesome. The streaming features that are built in, I haven't really fully grasped it. A lot of magic happens, but again, we're gonna really understand it in this video course. Data fetching, simplified data fetching with async await in the server component. Yes, we can have components that have async and await, which is great. And an extended fetch API for request uh, memory, data caching, and revalidation. Again, I've used that, but I don't think I've used it properly. I feel I either use stuff cached all the time or not cached at all. Whereas I think in the middle, we can have things that are cached for a limited amount of time. So therefore we can optimize the app to save us money and give a better user experience. Styling, support your preferred styling methods, CSS modules, Tailwind CSS, and CSS in JS. I use Tailwind a lot here, but it'd be great to explore the other options. 
optimization, images, fonts, and script op optimizations to improve your application's core web vitals and user experience. Images are amazing, uh, especially if you're using it with Vercel, you do get a lot of uh, image optimization for different sizes, caching, etc. Again, we will learn that together. TypeScript, improved support for TypeScript with better type checking and more efficient compilation, as well as custom TypeScript plugins and type checker. I love TypeScript, but on most open source projects, I actually use JavaScript because I feel it's more inclusive and it, it scares less people off, but I do absolutely love TypeScript. What should we use in this project? Again, let me know below because I'm still undecided and we've got one video to decide and the next video when it comes out next week, we need to start on our project and need to make some decisions. I know you're super excited to get coding, get into the terminal, get building something, so am I. So now we've got kind of you know that out of the way and we understand a bit more of why Next.js. Well, let's do a hello world. So you need Node.js 18.17 plus installed to make sure you've got that. What have I got? We can check with Node uh, minus minus version and we have 21.4. So we are good, we're ready to go. Check yours as well. And you can use MPX create next app latest, which I use all the time. I think it is brilliant. So let's copy that and let's create our project. So now if you enter, what's our project name? Let's call this Next.js video series. And we might rename this in the next video when we actually come up a project and a proper name for it. I would like to use TypeScript. Oh, I did say that we could decide between now and the next video, but for now, maybe we'll make a temporary project and we'll recreate this on the next video very, very quickly. So let's just say no for now. ESLint, yes please. Tailwind, yes please. Source directory, yes please. App router, Yes, please. And don't worry, if you don't know what these directories are, we are going to go through in the next video what each directory means in each file so you can understand that better, where to put your files and so forth. So we will get into that, don't worry. Uh, would you like to customize the default import? We'll say no for now. And uh, this is just so you can have aliases so you can shorten your imports. But most of the time we will just use the default because we're going to source directory. Then in that source directory, we will have components, utilities, etc. So we can just use that directly. And now it's creating the project for us and doing npm install. It's asking me for my password because it wants to do an initial commit on the project and I have GPG keys set up on my git commits. So you won't have this password for yours. And so now we can navigate into that project. And if I bring it up here, you can see we're in the main branch. And if I do a git log, you can see that I made the commit just a moment ago and it's got the comment initial commit from create next app. So you can see we have got that and we have got different views of this as well, but it will look better as we do more commits. Following their documentation, they have got manual installation, which I don't recommend. I think the command just makes it so much easier. So I won't go through this, that part of doing it manually. But the interesting part that I do want to go through is the different commands that we've got. So let's open VS Code and let's have a look. Now with VS Code open, I have opened uh, the package.json file and you can see that the name of it is the name we gave it when we ran the command. Um, and we've got these scripts. This is what we're quite interested in. And this is what it has on the left hand side here. So we've got dev, so you can run next dev, but in this case, we can actually run npm run dev, which will then run the next dev command. And what that will do, that will run the project in development mode. So there'll be no caching and all that great stuff. And it will hot reload after changes. We'll run that in the moment. We have got npm run build, which will run next build. And that is to build the application for production. And then we have npm start. That doesn't need the run in front of it. So npm start. Then that will do next start, which will run the application in production mode using the previous build command. So before you run the start command, make sure you run the build command. And we have all also got a link command, which will be npm run lint. So let's get the project up and running and actually have a look and make sure the hello world works. So we do npm run dev. Remember to navigate into your new project directory before you run that command. You don't need to do npm install. Next.js has already done that for us. And it says it's ready. So you can see now this is our next project that we've got running and you can see it's giving us some logging output of what is going on. And if you don't believe me, what we can do is actually make some changes and we will go through this directory structure. Let me just go to the page file and let's just make some changes. This is created by default, so we could remove this. For example, if I delete all this inside and we'll see the page 
change drastically. Let's go right to the bottom. And if I delete that, so we're just basically keeping main. And if I just say, hello world, and hit save, you'll see it refreshes on the left hand side about me refreshing the page and it says hello world. So this is our application. So let's talk about the directories. Next.js uses the file system routing, which means routes in your application are de determined by how you structure your project. So in this case, on the root of the project, I went to localhost 3000 and it loaded up page.js. And that's because it is page.js in the app directory. So it's source, app, and then page. And that's what will be loaded on the root. So here there's no path, but we can create paths shortly to do um, sub pages and we'll do that shortly and then the layout fire will also play a role in the directory structure so here you can see we have got a layout in the app directory and that will be applied to every page unless there is an overriding layout file for that other page and again we'll get into that and do some examples around that so this is our root layout the public folder is optional. Um, it's a great place to store your static assets such as images, fonts, etc. And Next.js command has created that for us. And when we come to build our project, we will remove these files that we will no longer be using and put our own there instead. And that is it for today. We have just touched on the directory structure, but we will go into more details in the next video. So don't forget to subscribe below and give this video a thumbs up while you're down there so you don't miss out on our next video where we go into the project structure and then routing and data fetching. We will be building a real world project. I did mention earlier on about what projects we would potentially build and some ideas for you. So for those of you who stuck around, thank you so much. And let me share some of my ideas. So we could build a directory of content creators and their pricing. So if they want to charge for a custom video or for a tweet or LinkedIn post or a blog post, we could have a directory of those people and their pricing. So therefore people who want to, like companies who want to um, have sponsored content created by the community, they could search and they could uh, say, I'm looking for someone to create a certain type of format. So a blog, video, tweet or whatever it is my budget is between this range and this range and it can filter people in that niche because we have topics as well if someone does say javascript or k8 kubernetes stuff and and all that cloud native great stuff or it could be in quantum computing or web dev so we could do that and that's a great way i think for us to build a real world project and give something back to the community not only because it'll be open source but because it actually has value the project we're building we're not just building another you know blog platform or a calculator or something that we're just doing to practice we want to practice but end up with a real world project and we'll be adding automated tests uh, github actions deployments and all that great stuff to it and we'll probably need to decide on what database we would use behind it as well um, or would we use something a, a bit simpler again let's talk about this in the eddie hub discord link in the description below and so we can build this project together and learn together at the same time what another idea I do have is we could have a URL shortener and tracking service. So therefore, people who want to share links on social platforms or blog posts or could have um, a way to track uh, how many clicks certain links get and where they come from as in location and platforms and so forth. So that's another one we could do. I'm sure you have lots of awesome ideas of small projects that we could build in this series together. Leave them below and I'll see you in the Discord.